Hello from me and my frog mug. <laughs> How are you guys? Why am I talking like this is a video call? Hello, my name is Carolyn. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today is another Russian lit reading vlog. I know, very exciting. I, I am very excited. So today we are going to be reading, as you can tell from the title, Eugene or Evgeny Onegin by Alexander Pushkin. I have not read any Pushkin before, and to say I'm excited would just be the greatest understatement in the entire world. Pushkin is the Shakespeare of Russian literature. This is a story in verse, and it is one of the most famous love stories from Russian literature. I am buddy reading this with my friend Sam, and this is, I think, his fifth or sixth time reading Yevgeny Onegin, so I'm excited to see what he has to say and what I think for my first read, and I just have a feeling I am going to absolutely fall in love with it. This is a new translation by Stanley Mitchell. I have heard mixed things about the different translations, but with all translated fiction, everyone has an opinion. Um, everyone thinks one is better than the other, so it's really up to you what you prefer. I haven't read from Stanley Mitchell before, so I don't really have an opinion on him yet. I do know that the Everyman's Pocket Poets edition of Yevgeny Onegin a lot of people really like, so I'm just going to go in pretty blind. Um, I have never read any Pushkin yet, so I don't, obviously I just said that, so I don't have anything to base it off of. I'm interested to see how I feel about the translation and how it comes across. Sam has sent me a few pictures of his his book and just like sharing a few stanzas and lines with me and it's absolutely gorgeous. Pushkin's rhyme feels so smooth and I haven't even really read him yet so I just have really really high hopes for this story, for this book, for Pushkin and I think it's going to be amazing. So without further rambling I'm just going to start reading my first ever Pushkin, and I think this is going to be the start of a beautiful friendship <laughs> between me and Alexander Pushkin.
Hello everyone and happy Thursday. Today is July 15th and oh my god, I am in love with this book. Oh my gosh. I knew that I was going to like it. I hoped that I would love it. I did not expect to fall completely head over heels in love with Yevgeny Unagin and Pushkin all together. Um, are you ready for the next thing that I'm going to say? I don't even think I'm ready for it. Well, I am, because I'm just very certain about this. Okay. I think Pushkin has defeated and overtaken William Shakespeare. I said it. I said it. Pushkin was greatly inspired by Shakespeare. He even directly quotes Hamlet in this story, and yeah, he mentions O Yorick from Hamlet, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Shakespeare, but Pushkin, his writing is so smooth, it flows so beautifully, it's, it's effortless. His writing is effortless, his rhyme is so natural and beautiful, and it just like slips off your tongue. Well, not that I'm reading it out loud, but it slips off the tongue in my mind. I can't believe how much I'm loving this book. So I am, I have read up to chapter four. I am now going to start chapter five at some point today. And obviously I'm reading this with my friend Sam and I have just been yelling at him this entire time and spamming him with a bunch of photos and just freaking out because it's amazing. And I, I just can't believe, I can't believe this book. It's definitely going to be a five star read. I'm only halfway through. And I know it's going to be a five-star read. I know that it's going to be a new all-time favorite. And I don't know where it's going to be in the ranking system of my favorite books, but it's going to be very high on that list. I just can't believe it. So, talking a little bit about Pushkin, he led an incredible life. In 1831, he married his wife and also finished and completed this story in verse. And he basically created the Russian language, or really influenced the Russian language. He made Russian literature what it is today. All of our favorite Russian writers at some point most likely has read Pushkin and was influenced by Pushkin. His, his writing is just unlike anything that I've read before. And okay, so I was going to talk about more about his writing, but let me talk more about him. And then in 1837, on January 27th, he was actually killed in a duel. And this duel was basically over jealousy of his wife. This one homosexual man was actually making advances, or I guess Pushkin thought he was flirting with his wife and he challenged him to a duel. Meanwhile, this man was actually homosexual. So Pushkin died for being falsely jealous, which I just think is an incredible story and unbelievable. And the fact that he was only 37 and he had such an incredible, massive impact on the literary world and just Russian literature in general is baffling. And I'm just fascinated by, by everything about Pushkin and about this book in Russian history, and this has just been me being a huge nerd this entire time, this entire reading experience. The writing is so fluid and natural, and it doesn't ask anything of you, and it just, it just feels like magic. I, I read these words, and they just feel like they were strung in the heavens and just sent down, and this just feels like the greatest gift to be able to read this book. I can't even begin to imagine how amazing it would be to actually read Pushkin's own words in the original Russian. This is the new translation by Stanley Mitchell. This is in the Penguin Black Spines, and I'm really liking it. It's not a direct translation, it's more, um, it speaks about it in the notes on the translation, but he's trying to capture the essence and the rhyme of Pushkin without doing a direct translation, which I think just flows a lot better as a non-Russian native speaker. Okay, really quick, my dad just came home from work and there was a package for me in the mail from Book Depository and it's a Russian classic. So we're gonna see, I ordered two of them for some future reads, some future Russian reads, and I don't know which one it will be because they come separately unless both of are in here, but this is pretty thin. So, okay. 
<gasps> I'm so excited. Part haul, part Pushkin vlog. Okay, let's try to pronounce this properly because that's the uh, greatest challenge in the life of Carolyn. Okay. <laughs> um, Alexander Solzhenitsyn. One day in the life of Ivan Denisovich. Correct? Not correct? Probably not correct. <laughs> This is from the Penguin Modern Classics collection, and this is another one that Sam and I will be reading together, and I'm really excited. I love the Penguin Moderns, and just Penguin Classics in general are amazing. They always have some so much great information in the background of the book, so the forward and afterwards are really great, as well as other information about the authors. So I'm so excited. I honestly have no clue what this book is about, and I kind of don't want to know too much. I sort of want to go in pretty blind, but Sam and I are reading these books somewhat in chronological order, so we started with Lermontov in with um, The Hero of Our Time, and now we're reading Pushkin, which Pushkin, I believe, wrote Evgeny Unagin first, but we're trying to go in order and then figure out which time period we like the best. So yes, this is one of the books, and then I also have another book that is waiting for me. Book haul over. Back to Pushkin. Um, what was I saying? I don't remember. So he's telling this story in verse, and he's using beautiful rhyme and rhythm and st stanza breakdowns and all these very restrictive poetic elements, but they don't feel restrictive. It feels so smooth and natural. And what's blowing my mind is that I'm so used to reading prose, obviously, because that's mainly what I read. I love poetry, but I read way more um, prose writing. And what I think is so fascinating is that Pushkin is telling us this story in the confines of these poetic elements, but it doesn't feel restrictive. and He's giving us beautiful descriptions, and he's giving us dialogue and character development, and he's setting scenes in a way that I've never read before, and it's incredible to witness, and it just feels like magic, and I didn't realize that someone could do what he is doing. It just, it genuinely feels like witnessing magic, and I'm loving absolutely every second of it. There are um, so many moments that I am predicting what is going to happen. I think I know what's going to happen. I think I know who the narrator is. I don't know. There are a lot of questions that I can't wait to be answered, and I'm just so excited to read chapter 5 for today. Something else that I want to talk about is a poem that Sam actually sent to me that Lermontov wrote about Pushkin, and it is the poem that made Lermontov famous. It is titled, Death of the Poet. The poet's dead, a slave to honor. He fell by rumor slandered, lead in his breast and thirsting for revenge, hanging his proud head. The poet's soul could not endure petty insults disgrace. Against society he rose, alone, as always, and was slain. Slain! What use is weeping now, the futile chorus of empty praise, excuses mumbled, full of pathos? Fate has pronounced its sentence. Was it not you who spitefully rebuffed his free, courageous gift, and for your own amusement fanned the nearly dying flame? Well now, enjoy yourself. He couldn't endure the final torture. Quenched is the marvelous light of genius. Withered is the triumphal wreath. Lermontov. Wow. So I love how these authors and these writers were so influenced by each other and inspired by each other. It's incredibly beautiful to witness as a reader and it's, it feels kind of like, it feels like watching a painting come to life and you, it feels like one of those Baroque or Renaissance paintings that you just witness as a viewer, but then reading Pushkin and learning about Russian literature sort of feels like they're holding out their hand, their hand comes out of the canvas and they pull you in and you can walk right in and see all the beauty that is not seen through that one-dimensional viewing of just the flat painting, if that makes any sense. Trying to explain how this book makes me feel is near impossible. It has a fascinating history, 
beautifully written. The word beautiful does not come close to what these words are. Um, yes, I mean, it's just, sorry, better than Shakespeare. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe I just said that. Because I love Shakespeare so much. The last thing that I want to mention is that this book is full of foreshadowing and symbolism and Chekhov's gun. Chekhov's gun is a term where, and Sam has taught me what Chekhov's gun is, is a term where in a Chekhov story, if something is mentioned like a gun and it's mentioned there for a reason, I forgot how he explained it, but it's basically like if, um, if a gun is mentioned, then expect it to be used by the end of the story. And so there are so many moments in this book and a lot of Russian literature, especially in Anna Karenina. We are also reading Anna Karenina for the Dickens versus Tolstoy debate. There are so many times when I'm reading that book and all I'm thinking is Chekhov's gun, Chekhov's gun. And I won't mention what because in case you don't know how Anna Karenina ends, there's so many moments, so much symbolism that Tolstoy uses that a lot of Russian writers use. I feel like I know where this story is going. I have my predictions. We will see what happens. Uh, I am halfway through and it has been more than I could have imagined. So really quick, something else that I want to mention before I forget because I have it right next to me. I wanted to journal throughout my journey of reading Russian literature. With this, I kind of want to just use it to scribble down whatever I'm thinking. If I learn anything, write down what Chekhov's gun is, write down all of my favorite quotes in just little scribbles, not having to worry about making everything perfect. So there is an amazing company that I love so much. They aren't sponsoring this video. I wish that they were, but they aren't. <laughs> I just love them so much and their work is amazing. They are called Obvious State and they are a stationary bookish company where they do a lot of literary quotes and they illustrate them and they are amazing. I have a, f I have a whole box of their postcards. They make these amazing little notebooks with the illustrations on them and they are all from recycled materials and all the proceeds go to the National Forest Foundation. So everything that this company stands for I really love and I love supporting them. They had two Dostoevsky notebooks and they're beautiful and I thought well if I'm going to be using them for my Russian lit notes, and they're small and they're just everything that I want, I had to get them. So here they are. They are so beautiful. The first one says, beauty will save the world. And then Dostoevsky, it has a beautiful picture of the globe with a flower. And then on the back, it's the same quote. And it tells you a little bit about all the recycled material that they use and just a little bit about the company and their notebooks, which is really great. And then it, they're these adorable little notebooks that I think are perfect to just write random notes in. Then the next one, I think this one might be my favorite out of the two. It says, above all, don't lie to yourself. And again, Fyodor Dostoevsky. And it actually has the head of this silhouette has the words of one of his books. I honestly don't know, I should have looked it up, what book this quote is from, or if it's just a Dostoevsky saying in general. Again, just the quote on the back, and I'm so excited to to fill this, to fill bo both of these notebooks with my Russian lit notes, and I'm probably going to have to get many, many more of them because they're quite thin, and knowing me, I ramble on quite a lot, so, um, I can't wait to put my Pushkin notes in them. I think I'm going to start with Pushkin and then go Lermontov and on and on with our Russian reads. So yes, I will document my experience and my writing with this journal as well, just so you guys get maybe an insight if you're curious as to my silly scribbles, as I like to call them. I am just soaking in all of the literary goodness and I'm loving every second of it. So without any more rambling on, I am going to read Chapter 5. I think I'm going to go to the beach with my dad and read Chapter 5 at the beach. I think that's going to be a good plan. So, let's go to the beach. Who started singing the song? Okay, <laughs> let's go to the beach. Beach, let's go get away. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go. I'm getting silly now. I always get silly.
I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I have two stanzas left of chapter five. Stanza 41 of chapter five. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Oh my god, okay. I'm gonna read the last two stanzas and then proceed to freak out. Okay. I need my glasses. I am blind. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. This book, this entire time I've sat here and I've read chapter five, I have just been in in agony, in utter silent agony. That sounds so dramatic. But, oh my god. Okay, I need to annotate this page. Oh my gosh. I knew it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I. I rarely feel this enraptured. I mean, I do, but like, it's on another level. Like, I haven't felt this way about a book <laughs> since Anna Karenina, my first read of it. I don't know, that's, that's a huge, huge, massive claim. But I just realized that I didn't actually tell you guys what Yevgeny Onegin is about and we're what, halfway, more than halfway through the book. <laughs> so, I thought I would tell you, this story obviously is a story in verse, and it is about our main hero or character, who is a very eccentric man. His name is Yevgeny, and it's about him in Russian society. We follow him <clears throat> throughout his life. He grows up pretty quickly in the first few chapters, and then we follow him as a young man, marital age. And it's basically about this him and his friend Blensky and and these two sisters, Tatiana and Olga. And uh, I I just don't want to say anything else. <laughs> All you have to know is it's about two friends and two sisters. <laughs> And Russian society, and love, and passion, and and so much more. It's just incredible. Let's see what the back says. Tired of the glitter and glamour of St. Petersburg society, aristocratic dandy Yevgeny Unagin retreats to the country estate that he recently inherited. This gives away way too much. Okay, I'll read the last line. It says, unfolding with dreamlike inevitability and dazzling energy, Pushkin's tragic poem is one of the greatest works of Russian literature. In this new translation, Stanley Mitchell captures the cadences and lightness of the original poem and discusses, in his introduction, Pushkin's life, writing, and politics, as well as previous translations of the work. This edition also contains a chronology and suggested further readings. And it says right here, the best book ever written. I can't argue with that. I really can't. I'm just gonna sit here and think about this book and just stare at the clock until it's tomorrow so I can read the next chapter. I think I will, I might take a break, let the chapter soak into my brain, collect my thoughts, and then read a bit more of Anna before I go to bed. I can't believe it. Oh god, oh god. Say hello! I have a special guest today. She's gonna be with us for two weeks. This is my uncle's dog named Julie. Julie, you wanna say hello? <laughs> okay, I think she's uncomfortable. Go, go ahead. If you hear any claws 
any claws on the floor or any noises, that's just Julie. Um, but today is now the next day, it is July 16th, and it is now evening, but today I did read chapter 6. Oh my god. The thing that I knew was going to happen, happened, but it happened in the way that I wasn't expecting. I was expecting it at the last minute, but for majority of the book I thought one thing was going to happen, and it did, but it happened a different way. I don't want to give any spoilers, but Pushkin is just continuing to blow me away. The writing is impeccable. I just, I didn't film myself reading the chapter six because it was just me with like crying and just being an, a dramatic reader and I loved every second of it. There were so many lines in particular and stanzas in in chapter six that were heartbreaking and I was just reading them thinking, I don't know, just that it was just that it was so affecting and so moving and the way that it's it's just it's poetry like it literally is poetry but it also is poetry in the fact that it is gorgeous and beautiful and more and I don't know how to explain it but it just feels more um, and it I don't know it affects it af it's affecting me more and I was just an emotional little mess when reading chapter six because obviously like I said the thing that happened happened but the way that it happened like I said just wasn't what I predicted except at the last moment so that made it even more emotive because I wasn't expecting it I knew it was coming like I keep saying but it just happened in this way that made it even greater and had even more power so Yes, I read chapter 6. Tomorrow is chapter 7. Julie is going to accompany me. Let's see if, uh, <laughs> how, how she does. This is going to be her first night staying over with us, and we're going to have her for two weeks, which I'm so excited about because I love dogs and I love having a puppy here. So, I will see you guys tomorrow. Hello everybody, it is now July 18th, and yesterday I read chapter 7 of Euphenia Unagin, and now I only have one chapter left and it is going to be read in a few minutes. Um, chapter 7 was probably the most heartbreaking of the entire book. I read it outside near the pool yesterday because it was blazing hot and it was just way too hot in my house so that was nice. And the whole time reading there I was just like tearing up. I couldn't, oh my gosh, it was just so emotive, so raw and brutal and so Russian and it was amazing and I loved every second of it. There were so many stanzas in particular that really stuck out to me, really affected me, and Pushkin just keeps blowing me away with his writing. So I'm very eager to finish the book, see what happens, and I like, I don't want the book to end, I really don't, and I don't know what I'm going to do when it does end. There is a Stephen Fry um, audiobook on YouTube that I think I'm going to listen to so I can just take in the words again through through a different narrator, not just in my in my brain. That's going to be really interesting and I love Stephen Fry's narrations and just Stephen Fry as a person. He's so great. So yeah, I'm going to be reading chapter 8. The last chapter! Oh my gosh. I don't want it to be over. I really don't. But then I can just reread it and reread it and reread it. So, yes. Without further delay, let's read the last chapter.
it is now finally time to talk about my favorite book of the year so far. Oh my... I have no words. I have no words. I just have these words, and they are all the words I will ever need in the whole world. Wow. I just... I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. It's just one of the greatest books I've ever read. One of the most beautiful and heartfelt and poetic, of course. I just don't even know if any words can do this book justice. And the second that I finished reading it, I started drawing an Alexander Pushkin portrait for my Etsy on the page that I do. And I, <laughs> while I was drawing it, I was listening to the Stephen Fry audiobook. So I think that was the day after I finished physically reading it myself. I needed the words back in my brain the second that I finished because I just couldn't be without them. And I wanted to reread it or listen to it. And it was just, again, one of the greatest reading experiences ever. Stephen Fry is the narrator, he did an amazing job, and drawing Pushkin himself, his portrait, while listening to his words was unbelievable. It was just absolutely unbelievable, and I think that's kind of what I want to do from now on whenever I work on an author portrait, is listen to an audiobook of their work while I draw it, because I feel like it really brings them to life, and it's my way of honoring the author, and it just feels even more special when I do that. So that is a start to something I'm really excited for, and I can't wait for you guys to see the portrait. I'm not going to show it yet because I'm waiting for it to come in the mail and then to have an Etsy restock, and I kind of want to keep it a surprise. That is my only new one that I have for my next restock, but I am going to be working on other new portraits to go into my Etsy shop in the future, but really excited for you guys to see that. The audiobook, the Stephen Fry audiobook is available on YouTube, so I cannot recommend it enough. I can't recommend this book enough. It is just one of the greatest things I've ever read, and I have been trying to think about, like, ways that I can talk about it and to express how I feel about this book in a coherent way because a lot of it is just emotion and sometimes it's hard to express those emotions, which is why I love doing reading vlogs because you can kind of see all of the emotions come together as they happen and that's what I really love doing. So I wrote a relatively long Goodreads review, which also I composed my own Pushkin stanza to express how I feel uh, in the way that Pushkin expressed how he felt and how he told stories, which I thought would be quite fun. And I'm going to read out my Goodreads review just because I do this sometimes with books. I did it with Great Expectations. I do it in some of my vlogs. I have a hard time expressing my emotions in a coherent way and it helps when I write things down. I am much more eloquent when I write things down instead of speak. I feel like I obviously, as you guys know, tend to ramble. So I'm going to be reading from my Goodreads review just because then you understand exactly how I feel and I like sharing my writing with you guys, even if it's just book reviews. Um, I would love to share more of my writing in the future, but for now, book reviews is the way to go. So I originally started with a stanza from the book, which is from chapter 8, stanza 36, and it says, But even while his eyes were reading, his thoughts were far away as old. Desires, dreams, sorrows kept invading and crowding deep inside his soul. Between the lines before him printed, his inward eye saw others hinted. On these he concentrated most, in their decipherment engrossed. These were the secret legends, fictions, the heart's dark story had collected, the dreams with all else unconnected, the threats, the rumors, the predictions, or else some lengthy crazy tale or letters from a fledgling girl. New Guinea, Lenagan, chapter 8, stanza 36. Have you ever read a book and asked, how can words do this? 
I asked myself this question after reading every single stanza of Evgeny Onegin. I believe that the greatest works of literature are the ones that leave you with more questions than answers, more sorrow than joy, and more feelings than you ever felt before. Evgeny Onegin is one of those great works of literature, and proof of this can be found in the questions I asked myself when reading my very first Pushkin. How can he write with such ease and fluidity while staying in the confines of the poetic form? How can Pushkin make me feel every emotion I'm capable of feeling? How can he paint such a lively and vivid picture in so few words? How can Pushkin tell such a vast and deep story in less than 200 pages? How can he give me so much without giving me anything at all? How can Pushkin just how? The answer is because he can and he did. In chapter 8, stanza 36, our hero, Eugene, or Evgeny, is found seeking the answers to life's unanswerable questions, and he's doing so by looking for them in the books on his shelves. Although I said, I believe the greatest works of literature are the ones that leave you with more questions than answers, I've also realized that the more questions I'm left with are in fact the answers. The answers are in the questions, and the questions are in the books. Here is a Pushkin stanza of my own silly creation, dedicated to Pushkin and Tolstoy. My dear Tolstoy, I'm afraid, my heart is no longer only yours. Alexander Pushkin has paid a visit to my heart's sweet door. I wish to keep you both forever, in that place always together. I cannot part with either of you, so here you'll stay, not one, but two. And in your words I seek to find questions in which your words are rife, of what is love and what is life, the queries of a sleepless mind. You have the answers, I can tell. They're in your books, for which I fell. That is my Goodreads review, and I just love taking in words, taking in a story, and trying to explain how I feel about them in a written form equal to the written form of the story. Because when I talk about things, I just feel kind of jumbled in my head, and when I write things on paper, it just flows much more <laughs> easily. So I hope you guys liked my Goodreads review. I kept asking myself, do I like this more than Anna Karenina? And how do I feel about Pushkin? How do I feel about Tolstoy? Because Tolstoy obviously is part of my personality now, just the fact that I'm a huge Tolstoy fan is who I am, and I remember watching a review from the translators Larissa Volkonsky and Richard Pavir, and they were asked who their favorite Russian writer is and who they love to translate, and who they thought the greatest Russian writer was. And I was expecting them to say Tolstoy, because in my mind, it's just, it's always been Tolstoy, but that's because I haven't read all of the Russian writers that they've translated, or all the Russian writers in existence, which I'm working my way to doing that. But they answered Alexander Pushkin, and I kind of was shocked, because I was expecting Tolstoy, and I thought, wow, Pushkin must be great. And he is, he completely is, and... I wasn't realizing that he could be this great, and so the whole question of who do I love more, Tolstoy or Pushkin, I've only read one Pushkin now, and I've read many Tolstoy, so I feel like it is a bit unbalanced, so I can't give a definite answer, but they are both now, like I said in my Pushkin stanza, they both share a very special place in my heart, the two of them together, because I really don't think I'll be able to pick one over the other. Just Alexander Pushkin's life, Tolstoy's life, their writing, their ability to affect the reader in such an incredible way. It, it was the same feeling that I felt when reading Anna Karenina and when reading all of Tolstoy's books and so many Russian books, so many amazing classics. I have a really hard time ranking them or even putting them in the same category or even trying to decipher how I feel about different classics because they all share a really special place in my heart and on my shelves and I don't know, it's one of the hardest things as a reader. So I love this book and it's one of my new all-time favorites 
it's up there with Jane Eyre and obviously Anna Karenina and War and Peace and Great Expectations and Wuthering Heights and A Room with a View and Maurice and uh, A Movable Feast and A Farewell to Arms and The Great Gatsby and I'm just looking at all of these amazing books that I absolutely love. Little Women, Tess of the D'Urbervilles, Don Quixote, Pride and Prejudice, uh, the Picture of Dorian Gray, just so many amazing classics, and this is why I read classics, this is why I read Russian literature, and if you are intimidated by Russian literature, if you are intimidated by classics, if you are intimidated by Pushkin, do not be, because they are magic, they are just pure, complete magic, and I can't express my passion enough, I can't express my love enough, and I just want to share that with you all, and doing this, making vlogs, reading books, and sharing my thoughts with you is one of the greatest things in the world, and I can't believe that I get to do it, so yes, please read this book. The ending, just the ending, Pushkin, oh my gosh, can't believe he did that to me, <laughs> but very glad. I, I loved the ending, and I loved the whole thing. I could reread this book over and over and over again and never be tired of it, honestly. I, the second I finished listening to the audiobook for the second time, I just thought, rewind and start again. <laughs> Something I did want to mention in terms of Tolstoy and Pushkin is that there is one stanza in this book and it's talking about Napoleon's invasion of Moscow. And he captured the entirety of the invasion in one stanza. Tolstoy dedicated a 1,000 plus page book to that time in history and Pushkin captured it in one stanza. And Tolstoy captured it, yes, beautifully in a thousand plus words. So it's incomparable. And it fascinated me that Pushkin could capture such a vast story in such a short amount of words, in such a short amount of space on the page. Just a little space on the page and he explained it beautifully and I think maybe I could feel a bit differently if I hadn't read War and Peace before reading that one stanza in particular because it is talking about the events that happened in War and Peace, Napoleon's invasion, and so maybe I wouldn't have felt so deeply for that one stanza and understand it as fully if I hadn't read War and Peace first, but I feel like Pushkin explains it in a way where you can understand it even without much knowledge of the invasion of Moscow. So that's something that really blew, blew me away. Pushkin did it in 14 lines, so it's just incredible what these different writers are capable of, and it's just mind-blowing. This book these books are mind-blowing, and I can't believe I'm lucky enough to be able to read them. So, I could keep going on and on and on about this book, um, but all I can really say is to please read it, because you just I just want to share the love, and I want you guys to feel what I felt when reading this book. It is indescribable. So, if you get anything out of this reading vlog, is please read this book. That's, that's it. Please read it, or even listen to it. Listen, I will put the link to the audiobook, the Stephen Fry narration, down in the description. It is gorgeous, and Stephen Fry does an amazing job. It isn't the exact translation as this one, but I really, really liked that translation as well that Stephen Fry narrated. And yes, so read it, or listen to it, or do both over and over and over again, because that's what I plan on doing. And I just want to say I'm really proud of this reading vlog. I think that it kind of has everything that I love in it. It has nature and wildlife and animals and my uncle's dog, which sadly she had to go back to my uncle's house yesterday. So yeah, and just it had this book in it. And I think it's the same thing with my original Anna Karenina vlogs, which my new Anna Karenina vlog will be coming soon. I've been working on it and I just haven't had time to upload it and edit it yet because I've been working on these vlogs, but I'm so proud of those because it it's like a time capsule. I get to go back and re-experience the book for the first time and I think that's why I'm loving this vlog so much is because it has this book in it and it has my reading experience for the first time in it and I'm just, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video because it's really special to me. I hope it's at all special to you too. And yes, I can't believe it's over though. I can't believe I read this book and it's done. I'm just going to keep rereading it over and over and over again. So 
I hope you guys enjoyed, like I said, for the well, 12th time. I will see you soon in another video. Happy reading! <laughs>